What's up guys, Anders here with another video. It's been a little while since I put up a video like this. I've been a little sick, but I'm trying to make more videos now. And since we missed the patch notes video, I wasn't able to announce the winners for the last week's giveaway. So I will be doing that in this video, but today we're gonna to take a look at the Global Labs PC patch notes. Uh, it's a couple of things that we're not gonna get for a couple of weeks, but uh, some interesting stuff, especially with Shai. So now with Shai, uh, she receives Rabam skills. So if you don't know what Rabam skills are, uh, there are skills that you can choose at 56 or 57. If you have the required uh, level of skills on two skills, you can choose a sort of fusion of that skill and have an additional skill to use. Its uh, main purpose was to have a sort of awakening style, a powerful effect, but they ended up just not really doing much with it. Some classes have terrible Rebomb skills. Uh, other classes have really strong Rebomb skills like Sork. Uh, with Shai, it didn't really make sense for them to use uh, Rabam skills, but they said a lot of people were asking about it, uh, also about absolutes, but they didn't they didn't really mention about absolutes. So uh, we got Rabams instead. Now at level fifty six, you're going to have two choices. Uh, both are going to create a what they call a Viclari light. Uh, one is going to follow and attack enemies for thirty seconds every three seconds, and the other is going to follow allies and restore health by 350 HP every seven seconds for 30 seconds. So one is an offensive skill and one is a defensive skill, obviously. The the heal seems more powerful uh, since you're able to uh, consistently heal people without actively having to do so since you're always unprotected when you heal. Now at level 57, you have two choices as well. These are actual abilities that do damage. Uh, one is a skill that does 10, 13% by four hits. It increases your DP by 10 for 10 seconds. It generates three Florang leaves, so it allows you to use your spacebar skill. And it has frontal guard, which is very good, and it also has a bound CC, but in PvE only, uh, which makes it kind of useless, to be honest. The second skill is a 1532 by seven hits, so a lot more damage potential. A 25% crit chance, so even more damage potential and it generates three flooring leaves it's unprotected so that's purely offensive so those are the rebom skills it should be coming very soon within a week or two possibly not this week since this is probably going to hit korea this week and then we'll get it the following week now for mewa awakening they improved skill flows to allow multiple combinations to be available uh, so that's good uh, they didn't really specify any damage increases or anything they just allowed you to have multiple flows uh, instead of being more predictable, they want you to be more unpredictable and kind of help Mewa that way. Striker Awakening had similar stuff where they improved animation combo speed of several abilities. They also added air bubble effects in the starting skill of every starting combo. Um, now, it says Awakening in the little Deb uh, blog thing, but I'm not sure if they mean Awakening has the animation combo speed effects increased and then Succession has the bubble effects. Um, hard to say. Now, Guardian, which if you saw my class guide, I said was not getting nerfs for a long time. Well, they I lied, I guess. They are getting nerfs today, but if <laughs> it's barely a nerf. Foretold Encounter uh, now gives you 12% accuracy buff for 10 seconds instead of 24% that I used to give. So now, of course, that is a huge difference. You're losing 12% accuracy buff. Uh, that's substantial. That's not a joke, but... When you think about it, 24% uh, buff is unheard of. No other class has something crazy like that. And they're already cutting down the 100% accuracy of certain skills. It just made sense for them to cut this skill down as well since it kind of went against what they're trying to force us to do with uh, accuracy, just building more accuracy instead of pure AP uh, down the road. Now, journal update, they have uh, added something for, I mean, I think for a long time they haven't really changed the way the journal works, but now you can see when your ship is destroyed and who actually destroyed your ship. So if you're one of those people that rightfully destroyed the multitude of Bartali boats or rafts that are just clogging the ports in Velia, um, now those people will know that you killed their Bartali boats or uh, their rafts. So, great. They need to figure something out with that because they can't just penalize people for killing those boats uh, and then not do anything about the problem and the reasoning why people are killing those boats, which is 
mainly there's no way to even dock sometimes. There's too much congestion in the port and they're not auto collecting the boats. Now, loot table has also increased uh, with the Ash Forest Ghost Spirit now being a drop in all Valencia, Camisilvia, and Dregan monsters. Uh, this is not a really a big deal. I think it's worth like 100k. Um, the reason that they did this is because this is a drop necessary for some quest lines. Uh, so if you don't have it available to you, you can't actually finish those quest lines. So you would have to go to Ash Forest, which 300 AP zone, you're not going to be doing as a, as a new player, obviously. Uh, next up, we have Sea Monster Hunting Changes. The Sea Crocodiles now have 40% less HP. That's a good change. Uh, the drop chance to obtain moss-covered map pieces have doubled. So that's for the... Uh, the eventual map piece or item that allows you to, I believe, use uh, Breezy Sail twice. And I heard it's really just hard to get. And uh, the downside is that Sea Crocodiles and I think the other two new zones are now two-party loot system only instead of up to three. So that's a bit of a nerf if you're doing that in groups. Uh, and finally, the quest updates. So quest updates... Um, not really going to see this for a long time. The reason that these quest updates have been uh, instituted in test server and then will be this week in Korea is because Korea no longer has a loyalty shop. So they don't have loyalties anymore or what they had is called mileage. Same thing. Uh, and because of that, they had to put in place some quests that allowed you to get some loyalty items through in-game means. So now a weekly quest that rewards you a mount death counter reset uh, so you can have a token for that every week. Um, a token for Mount Resurrection as well. A Patrigio costume bag, which is huge. I mean, this is worth like 35 days of loyalty right now for us. So they can get that every week now. Um, if you don't know what a Patrigio bag does, it just allows you to put your costumes in there. And then you can just instantly use the bag to swap to a different costume instead of using each individual piece in your inventory. Just saves you a little bit of time. And there's a daily quest that rewards you Valk's Cry. So you, they can get seven Valk's Cry a week. Uh, as opposed to, I think, the limit for us and for them used to be five a week uh, through loyalties. And that's pretty much it for Global Labs PC patch notes. Uh, now I'm going to talk to you guys about the giveaway. So the giveaway winners are here. Congrats to you both. Uh, sorry about the delay on, uh, on the giveaway winners. And for this week, I have uh, two codes for Guardian Succession Outfits. So again, one is going to be selected from Twitter and one is going to be selected from YouTube. So all you need to do is follow me on Twitter, um, subscribe to the channel here, uh, like the video, uh, comment down below as well. And that's pretty much it. You can comment anything you want and you should be fine. This is going to be a slightly shorter um, giveaway period so you only have a few days so I'll be doing a patch notes video on Wednesday or Thursday so I'll announce the winners by then and that's pretty much it for this one guys let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below let me know what you thought about the shy row bomb skills do they look interesting to you or not but anyway let me know in the comments down below as always if you haven't already subscribed to the channel every sub counts as we continue to grow like or dislike this video depending on how your day is going hopefully well uh, considering how the world's going. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.